If you think AI is something for the future, hate to break it to you. The future is already here. Today, you're going to discover one of Microsoft's most powerful tools that every few people even know how to use, Azure AI Foundry. Imagine having access to the most advanced AI models in the world from OpenAI, Meta, Microsoft, and more, all in one place without needing to be a coding expert or machine learning expert. Plus, you're gonna learn how to build your own intelligent AI agents, custom bots, and assistants that can solve real world problems, whether it is for your job, your business, or your career in tech. And on this video, we're gonna have Herbert Pereira, one of our experts in here at the Cloud Bootcamp. If you want to stand out in this AI-driven world, stick around until the very end, because what you're about to learn could seriously change your career. Let's jump in. Okay, we are logged into the Microsoft Azure portal. We are also logged into the Azure AI Foundry portal. Through the Azure portal, you can access Azure AI Foundry and create both a project and a hub. But in my opinion, it's much easier to do everything through the centralized platform that is Azure AI Foundry. From Azure portal, click on all resource to see all the resources that have been created in your account. I'm using a pay as you go account and at the moment I don't have any resources created. Also under resource group, I only have the default resource group. As we create resources in Azure AI Foundry, through the Azure AI Foundry portal itself, we'll see which resources will be created here. The first step will be to create a project, but I need to log in first. It will take my credentials, which I already have logged into my Azure account. And let's start by creating a project within Azure AI Foundry. So when you click on create a project, in addition to the project, it will also create a hub for that project to be stored. And within this hub, you can have more than one project. I'll give this project a name. And you have the option to customize it if you want to create it in a different region or if you want to change the name of the resource group that will be created. Also note that it'll also create a storage account, a key vault, and the Azure Artificial Intelligence Services. I'm going to click on Create. It will start the creation process. I'm going to pause the video and come back as soon as it's finished. As the resources are being created, if we go back to the Azure portal and click on All Resource again, we'll see that some resources have already been created. And if we access the resource group again, Note that a new resource group has been created. In fact, we're going to delete this resource group when we finish this whole demonstration so that we don't get charged for resources that aren't being used. It's just for study purposes. Let's go and explore Azure AI Foundry. It's finishing up and now it's going to open the project you've created and we'll explore some of the available options. First of all, it provides you with the endpoints and keys in case you want to create a solution and integrate an assistant, an AI agent you've developed, into your application or any other artificial intelligence solution you've built within Azure AI Foundry. We have a model catalog where you can access various models for testing. You can even filter the models by specific tasks using the available filters. For example, I want to see which models are available for text-to-speech or text translation. There are also other options such as summarization and more. Of base. It's also possible to filter by a particular provider like the Microsoft and Meta models. We even have the DeepSeq option. There's already a DeepSeq model available for use. Another very interesting feature we have is compare models, where you can compare models. For example, I want to make a comparison between the quality and the cost of two models that I have in a particular project. So, as well as selecting the models to carry out this test, it gives you a graph showing the comparison. In this case, one axis is for quality and the other for the cost, all right? So let's click on Playground, where we have a series of functionalities ready to be used and tested. Our focus is going to be on the Playground agent, where we're going to be creating an assistant that will be teaching us Python. We're going to create a Python programming learning assistant. But you have other Playground options such as speech, real-time audio playground, 
This feature is fantastic and I encourage you all to try it out. So let's click on Try the Agent Playground. You can create an assistant for a variety of cases such as a financial assistant who can help you manage expenses, investments, and financial planning. You can also create a code and documentation generator assistant that will help you develop, write code, generate documentation, and review errors. In our case, we're going to create an assistant for learning and studying. You'll need to select the artificial intelligence service that was created with the project. Let's select it and click on Let's Go. In the next step, it will ask you to select which model you want to test. You need to select the model and make a deployment. Once you've done that, you'll be ready to test your wizard in a simple, fast way on a centralized platform. Here it is listing the models I have available to do some testing. Other templates will still be loading. Templates, for example, from OpenAI, which is what we're going to use for this demonstration. Just wait a second and it'll display the total list of all model options available. Let's test the GPT-4 model. I'll select this model, click on Confirm. Once the template has been selected, it will open a screen for you to do the deployment process. I'll keep the model name as default. The type of deployment, as it's for studies, I'm going to select a standard deployment. It doesn't have to be global. It does some analysis and I can click on deployment. We can configure the token per minute, which limits the number of rings that will be sent and received by the model. You can leave it as default or set it to 4K as I just did. I'll click on deploy and it will start the deployment process. Another very important point when you configure an assistant is to set up its instructions. We will create a Python programming learning assistant. The primary goal is for it to serve as an intelligent assistant that explains code, suggests improvements and optimizations, and provides practical examples to help users learn and enhance their Python programming skills. Therefore, it's crucial to establish well-defined objectives. In addition to setting these goals, you also need to outline the general guidelines that will govern how the assistant interacts with users, ensuring consistency in explanations, clarity in responses, and adherence to best practices in Python development. These guidelines will shape the assistant's behavior, making it a reliable and effective tool for learners at various skill levels. I want it to give detailed explanations. I want it to have a structure in the answers. As we can see, I have some mistype in the instructions. I will fix it. Give me a second. And as you make these settings, it shapes the model. What's more, I also have instructions about languages and technologies. It's not good yet. Let me try again. And from languages and technologies, I want it to respond only with Python. And you can limit the model. You only specialize in Python, as well as specifying some use cases. For example, I want it to explain the concept, code snippets, help debug code, suggest fixes, suggest challenges, and practical exercises for the user to practice. I can also define how the interaction with the user will take place. If the question is too vague, for example, ask the user for more complete information before answering. We can also place some security restrictions. For example, you shouldn't answer questions about languages other than Python. Avoid generating malicious code. Don't suggest bad development practices. Another very important point when you create an assistant is to train it with an example. So here I'm giving an example of what the assistant should do. So if the user asks what lists are in Python and how can use them, it first comes up with an explanation of what the user asked, and then it comes up with an example code. And if it's even possible, it brings up a reference. So all of this that you're seeing are instructions that we're going to give to our assistant. Okay? Let's see if our assistant has been created. Our next step is to give these instructions to our assistant. So I'm going to copy and paste the instructions. Once we have the instructions properly configured for our agent, we can now move on to the testing step, which serves as a comprehensive preliminary check of its capabilities. To do this, I'm going to take a prompt that's often used when we're learning a programming language where we want suggestions for challenges or exercises both for beginners and advanced levels. So it's precisely this type of prompt that we're going to put here. I want to practice Python. Can you suggest a programming challenge for beginner and advanced levels? So let's run our prompt and wait for our wizard to respond. Let's see, and there it is. The wizard is already working, responding with everything we need. That's amazing. Now let me take one more prompt here. 
I'm now going to ask it in a new prompt to suggest challenges for another programming language, JavaScript, and let's see what our assistant's response will be. It states that the wizard can only provide Python instructions, demonstrating how its functionality can be intentionally limited, right? So to finish off the video, let's go back to the Microsoft Azure portal, and then let's access the resource group section. We will delete the resource group created by the Azure AI Foundry, and everything inside of it will be deleted, the hub, the project, the AI service, and all the resources created by the Azure AI Foundry project. You need to copy and paste the name of the resource group and then click on Delete. From this action, all the resources will be excluded. Going back to Azure AI Foundry portal, we can just close it. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. And then if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to our channel Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and also please leave us a comment telling us what you think about this video and also the things that you'd like to see in a new video here on our channel, okay? And if you're interested in mastering MoveShikov DevOps and AI with our help, please check the links in the description as well. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.